As a knowledgeable accounting and finance professional, you know that the three-way match is kind of the holy grail when it comes to accuracy and avoiding payment errors in processing invoices for payment. That's why we're taking a deep dive today into everything related to this important bedrock of the accounts payable function. If you want to demonstrate a strong foundation in accounting stuff, but especially accounts payable issues, make sure you stick around until the end when we analyze some unexpected situations where the three-way match saves the day. Let's start with a look at exactly what the three-way match is. The three-way match is used in most organizations who want to make sure that the invoice that they pay is accurate. Once it's got the approval from whoever ordered the item, it comes back and you don't just automatically pay it, you need to make sure the invoice is accurate. That's because the approver rarely checks the details on the invoice, only that they've um, ordered the stuff. The three-way match matches the invoice with the receiving document with the purchase order. We're going to go through the process now, focusing on the documents and the places, the common places that errors are made. So let's start off with the purchase order, which as you know, is the document that starts the transaction. It is a commercial document issued by the buyer, uh, placing an order with the seller. It indicates what is being ordered, the amounts, and agreed upon prices and other terms and conditions. These are often negotiated in advance and will typically cover multiple purchase orders unless it's a special, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. Once accepted, the transaction is set in motion. Now, um, a little tip, if you will, make sure that the purchase order is filled out completely. This is typically not a big deal in the days of electronic uh, purchase orders. Okay. So what's the big purchase order mistake? You need to remember if your purchasing folks make a special deal that they adjust the purchase order. They don't just tick that standard terms and conditions. Sometimes if it is not about the price, it might be, let's say, about the payment terms that um, are not reflected on the purchase order unless somebody makes a special effort to change the standard terms and conditions. Oftentimes when this happens, the purchasing team does not no make a note of it on the purchase order and just hopes or trusts that the supplier will make note of it when it of the longer payment terms when they issue the invoice. But guess what? They often forget. And when this happens, there is absolutely no way that accounts payable can know about the extended payment terms because purchasing didn't tell them. It's not on the invoice. It's not on the purchase order. So there's no way that they know, and they end up paying uses, using the standard payment terms, and this savings that purchasing worked so hard to negotiate goes up in spur. Special alert. Anyone who arranges a special deal at the end of the fiscal year needs to be especially aware of this, because this is typically when this happens, although it's not the only time, and it is often overlooked. Um, this is especially prevalent in the pharmaceutical industry for, in one case. And when I tell you that it is often overlooked, I will tell you that in some instances, companies have overlooked 100% of those savings. Okay, I'm going to stop carrying on about that. And I'm going to move on to talking about receiving documents. Um, receiving documents are sometimes called packing slips. Um, and typically they're included in the shipment and delineates all the items included in the shipment. You get this when you order yourself. So for example, in uh, if you order from Amazon, you get that little slip of paper and it tells you what's in there. All it says is what's included. It's nothing about price, terms, and conditions. Now, the receiving document mistake, if you will. Um, first of all, the receiving document needs to be verified and verified closely when the goods are received. Um, oftentimes it is not. The goods are just simply signed for and it is assumed that the shipment is correct and matches what's on the packing slip. So if the packing slip says um, 100 widgets, you need somebody to verify that there are 100 wid widgets. If the packing slip says blue widgets, you need somebody to make sure that they're all blue widgets. Are they damaged? If so, how and where should be noted? You get the idea. But too often what happens is the goods are marked and in at the receiving docks and no one does this in-depth check at that point. And if no one checks closely, then there is no way to catch a short payment or 
a short shipment or a defective shipment later on. Let's turn our attention now to invoices, which, by the way, is the document that most believe caused most of the problems with the three-way invoice uh, with the three-way match. The invoice or the bill, if you will, is the document sent by the seller to the buyer, basically requesting payment. If it doesn't match what's on the purchase order and what was received, i.e. what was on the packing slip or receiving document, it is considered a discrepant invoice and must be reconciled, okay? And this happens often. Um, and so it is very important that you don't take the approach, we get an invoice, we pay an invoice, what's the big deal? The problem begins when this reconciliation is done, not done in a timely manner and the invoice isn't paid on time and then the supplier, in, and they're totally 100% right to do this, sends a second invoice when the payment date passes um, and they're looking for payment. And this often compounds the problems associated with it. So now let's talk about some invoice problems. And there are many. So we're only going to talk about a few because you don't want to hear me go on and on all day here. So we're going to just talk about the a few of the bigger ones that you need to be on guard for. Okay, invoice mistake number one. Um, not making sure your suppliers know where to send invoices, making it um, that they just put a general address on, the invoice floats around, and of course, you get it late, and then you can't get it paid on time. You would be surprised just how often this happens. So you want to make sure your, your suppliers know exactly where to send the invoice, be it a mailing address or an email address, and you want them to do it precisely. Invoice mistake number two, not reconciling these discrepant invoices in a timely manner. I know it's much easier to put the invoice aside that are, that are discrepant and go back and, and, you know, start processing ones that do match. And then, you know, I'll deal with these discrepancies later. But you know how that happens. It gets put aside and then it doesn't get worked on for a day, two days, a week two weeks, and then before you know it, it's past due. So reconcile your discrepant invoices in a timely manner. And now for the big issue that can be solved by simply talking to your suppliers, okay? Talk to them. And a lot of this problem will go away. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Actively encourage your vendors to send only one copy of the invoice. For when they send multiple copies of the invoice, your chance of making a duplicate payment in increases and you just have to waste time processing that invoice, figuring out it's a duplicate, and weeding it out. So encourage all your vendors to send only one copy of the invoice. And this might even mean picking up the phone and calling them. Now, some of them will have a practice of, um, you know, sending multiple copies and you're not going to be able to stop them. But, but just understanding what the documents are is just the first step. You want to make sure you are using all relevant best practices. You can't afford to miss even one. Let's investigate the most important ones related to the three-way man. Now, best practice number one. And I realize that if you're in accounting or accounts payable, this might fall outside your purview, but it's something to really keep in, in, in mind. You want to make sure right off the bat from the beginning that you get, get off on the right foot. This means that the purchase orders must be accurate every single time. An accurate purchase order means one that's filled out completely and also one that the... Uh, a purchaser did not mindlessly check off standard terms and conditions uh, before sending it. If the purchaser has made some special arrangement, if it's, for, if it's for something as simple as extended payment terms, that needs to be reflected on the purchase order. For if it's not, and if the vendor forgets about it and doesn't include it on the invoice, there's no way the accounts payable team is going to know it when they, when they pay the invoice. And that wonderful negotiation that your purchasing department did is going to go up in smoke because the purchase order is going to match the invoice and they're going to go ahead and pay. So that's uh, best practice number one. One best practice number two, and again, this might be outside the purview of uh, accounting or accounts payable, but you want to make sure the receiving uh, uh, practice, the receiving doc, does what they're supposed to do. This means not just marking off goods, marking off goods in when they're delivered and uh, marking them received, but actually verifying what's in and more importantly, what's not in the shipment. This may involve checking the quantity, the quality, um, etc. 
and any discrepancies should be noted. If you ordered 100 widgets and you only got 95, then you want to make a note that only 95 widgets were received. So when the invoice shows up for 100 widgets, your uh, accounts payable staff can make the appropriate um, adjustment. Okay, uh, best practice number three, of course, perform the three-way match before paying every single invoice. Um, anytime there is a discrepancies, uh, investigate it and resolve it before you pay the invoice. For many, okay, not necessarily everybody, but many, it is becoming a best practice to use technology to automate and streamline your accounts payable invoice processing, uh, your invoice handling process, okay? Um, if you have a large enough volume, and that volume is the, the number is, uh, has been decreasing, then this might be a good approach to approach for you. So it's something to consider. Um, and we've got a whole ton of videos about um, if you're purchasing a new automation solution and things to look for, et cetera. Practice number five, implement strong internal controls. Sometimes people think, oh, well, we're doing the three-way match. We don't have to worry about uh, internal controls. That's not true. There must be, you must integrate internal controls, strong internal controls along every aspect of your three-way match um, and do it with every single time. Using best, best practices is a really good first step. Avoiding common worst practices is also required if you're demonstrating your accounts payable expertise. Here are a few that are commonly used and you should avoid at all costs. Worst practice number one, not doing the three-way match at all. If you take the uh, approach you get an invoice, you pay an invoice, and you just operate your accounts payable function like that, you're going to end up paying invoices two and three times. And trust me, there are a few suppliers out there who, when they realize this is what's going on, they'll send you many copies of the same invoice. Not only that, um, oftentimes you'll pay an amount that is more than that you actually owe. So um, if you're watching this, you probably are not doing that, but I just wanted to include it because unfortunately there are some companies out there that that's how they approach this. Worst practice number two, when you get an invoice that is for a lower amount than the purchase order, and you think, oh goody, we'll save a few bucks here, and you just pay the lower, lower amount. No, that's the worst practice. And the reason for this is that for the most part, your suppliers aren't stupid, um, and there's a reason that it's a lower price. Maybe they shipped a lower quality good. Um, maybe they didn't uh, ship as many items as you ordered. There's some problem here, and you need to investigate what it is, uh, because otherwise there can be a, a problem elsewhere in your operations. First practice number three, when purchase orders are missing information, assuming you know what should be in there because you know, you've seen so many purchase orders like this before. No, you need to go back to purchasing and you need to get them to fix, uh, put in the missing information because sometimes what you assume will not be correct and then you'll end up with either a problem or later on or paying the wrong amount once again. Worst practice number four, not having a process to periodically review stale dated open receivers and open purchase orders to determine if they are still valid and if they're not closing them out. You need to have a rigorous process in place to do this um, because otherwise if you just leave them out there, uh, it can, they can be used to facilitate fraud. And if you leave open receivers out there, you can um, end up with an unclaimed, a state unclaimed property auditor uh, claiming that um, it was unclaimed property or again, it can facilitate fraud. Now, often there is a dispute within an organization of who should do this. And, you know, we can talk about that a lot. But the important issue is that, A, it's done, and it's done with the proper controls in place, um, that you have two-party sign-off because you don't want anybody playing games there. Worst practice number five, not having the appropriate internal controls throughout your entire uh, three-way matching pr process. This can hurt more than many people realize. You're probably aware that by their very nature, best practices encompass strong internal controls. But do you have all the necessary controls in place around your three-way match? Let's do a quick review to make sure you've got all the bases covered. Three-way match internal control number one. You need to have rigid coding standards which tell your invoice processes exactly how the data should be entered. This way there can be no creativity, no misunderstandings, and no 
invoices getting entered twice because this way if an invoice comes in today and you enter it and two weeks later another copy of the same invoice comes in and I go in to enter it it'll be pretty easy for me to identify it as a duplicate so that's three-way match internal control number one three-way match internal control number two is an important one and this is to make sure you immediately and underline immediately extinguish purchase orders and receiving documents after you do your three-way match and it's been successful. You want to make sure that those purchase orders and receive is don't get used a second time. They don't want to hang around so somebody else can process an invoice against them. Now, some folks will wait till the end of the week or the end of the month to close out the purchase orders and the receiving documents. Don't do it. You want to do it immediately because if you don't do it immediately, and in the interim between today, when you did your three-way match and the end of the week or the end of the month, another copy of that shows up, it can end up getting processed and worse paid. So that should be part of your immediate processes. Okay, three-way match, internal control, number three. You want to periodically review outstanding receivers and purchase orders to determine their status and to remove them if they're not viable. Now, what is an old outstanding receiver or purchase order will vary from company to company. For some companies or some organizations, it'll be one that's been out there for one month, for others three months. It just depends upon the nature of your business. But periodically, someone should go through and review these old purchase orders and receivers that have not been matched and determine if they are still valid. Maybe they should have been closed out, but they weren't. Or maybe that order was canceled, or maybe there's some other error but it needs to be done. Now, frequently when this issue comes up, I'm asked, well, for example, with the purchase orders, should purchasing do it or should accounts payable do it? The answer is whoever has the most knowledge should do it, but most importantly, it should be done, okay? Not worrying about who is going to do it. And this falls by the wayside. I can't tell you how often. Well. Three-way match, internal control number four periodically you want to verify that your processes are using the procedures that you have set up for them for processing invoices and they should be doing it exactly as you have it documented in your policy and procedures manual this doesn't have to be anything formal but what you want to do is just you know sit down with them don't tell them you're coming just sit down and watch them process maybe for half an hour an hour and make sure that they're doing things exactly how you have laid out. What you want to make sure is that they have not introduced any shortcuts that might be a shortcut for them, but introduces a control weakness elsewhere in your process or makes more work for somebody else. Often this is what will happen. People come up with a shortcut. And by the way, if it's a good shortcut, then everybody should be using it, not just that one person. And you don't want to do everybody in one day so everybody knows that the manager's coming to review. Just go and sit with people, you know, at odd times, but make sure within a six month or a year time frame that you sit with everybody on staff. And after a while, and you probably know this without even doing this, you'll know who is likely to have created shortcuts and who isn't. But periodically, you want to make sure you review this three-way match control. It's a little bit long, but I want to explain it. Have a process in place that handles the timely resolution of three-way match failures. That's right. When we talk about doing the three-way match, matching the invoice with the purchase order against the receiving document, that's fine. You know, we have it in our processes. But oftentimes, people don't have what's going to happen when there is no match. Now, there are two parts of this tip. Number one, you need to have a resolution process. And then the second part, which we sometimes forget about, is this resolution needs to be done in a timely manner. If it's not done in a timely manner, you're apt to get another invoice because the vendor didn't get paid and they're looking for their money. So they'll send another invoice. Best case scenario, you catch it, you don't pay it. Worst case scenario, you don't catch it and you do pay it. And even if you do catch it, it takes extra work and extra resources that most of our accounts payable teams today don't have. They don't have extra people just sitting around to do this extra, extra work. Okay. So timely resolution. Now, you may occasionally hear other professionals talking about 
a two-way match and a four-way match. If you understand the three-way match, they shouldn't be difficult to comprehend, but let's just take a moment to go over them. So the two-way match typically involves matching the invoice with the receiving document. This is used in cases where a purchase order wasn't issued and um, the goods have come in and now you're going to uh, review the invoice for payment. The four-way match is at the other end of the spectrum and it, it takes the, three, the documents used in the three-way match, purchase order, receiving document, and invoice, and matches them also against what's known as an advanced shipping notice, an ASN. Um, that is usually sent out before the goods are, are shipped. Um, this is typically used in, in um, when big orders are involved and a lot of expensive machinery. Sadly, there are exceptions when the three-way match fails. Let me explain. What do you do with the data related to the accounts payable process three-way matches that go wrong, i.e., when you match the invoice against the purchase order and the receiving document and they don't match? There's a wealth of business intelligence in that data if you choose to collect and analyze it. And I'm sure you're going to realize that I'm going to recommend that you do that. It can and should be used to drive process improvements across your entire procure to pay chain, not just the accounts payable function. We'll show you why you should analyze the data and a rather simple way to do it. And let's talk about tracking discrepant invoices. You absolutely should be tracking them. You can do it in your ERP system if you have the functionality to do that, but many ERP systems don't have the functionality. And so someone, usually the accounts payable manager, does it in a separate spreadsheet. You can just do it in a simple Excel spreadsheet. And you want to do this for a number of reasons. Obviously, you want to get the invoices discrepancies resolved, but you also want to do it in a timely manner. Because if you don't do it in a timely manner and the due date passes, the vendor will send a second invoice. So you'll have one copy of the invoice and then you'll get another copy of the invoice. And if it still is not resolved by, let's say, 60 days, if payment was due with 30 days, you'll get still another copy of the invoice and maybe you'll get more than them. So a lot of extra work, a lot of extra invoices, and occasionally some of those invoices get paid twice those second and third copies, and we absolutely don't want to do it. So here's how you can do it. Let's assume that the accounts payable manager, the director of accounts payable, maybe an assistant controller is going to do it. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a spreadsheet and you're going to keep track of the discrepant invoices and who's supposed to resolve them. Now, I'm not going to start ranting and raving about the fact that most of the time the responsibility for resolving discrepant invoices lies in accounts payable when accounts payable is the group or the person who has the least amount of information, be that as it may, but it's usually in accounts payable. And you're going to create this spreadsheet and you're going to have columns across the top and you're going to try and capture every possible piece of information. So you'll have the invoice, the date, the date that you got it, who was the purchaser, who was the supplier, who was the AP person person and any other relevant people who were associated with this. Then you're going to put common reasons why the match might fail. Let's say inaccurate invoice, pricing error. You know, there's a million other reasons. You know what they are. And a lot of them will be peculiar to your organization. You're also going to date this. You're going to date when the invoice came in, when the problem was identified, when the emails were sent out either to purchasing or to your supplier to try and get it resolved. And you're going to keep track of this. You can use this for two reasons. Number one, for tracking purposes, to make sure that you get these discrepancies resolved in a decent amount of time quickly, so you don't get those second invoices that I talked about, and also for analytical purposes so that you can try and use them as I'm about to describe. You're going to have a comment field also in this, and you are also going to put dates down, when the problem was identified, how long it took different people to respond, and when it was resolved, okay? And you want to make sure your invoices don't languish and you also want to collect this data. Now, periodically, and what I mean by periodically will depend upon your organization. If you only have one or two discrepant invoices, let's say a month, well, this isn't going to work for you. But I suspect if you're like 99 and three quarters percent of the people who I encounter, this is not the case. So periodically, it could be weekly, it could be monthly, it could be quarterly, depending upon what your workflow is, what are the work you're doing, and the nature of your business, you're going to pull the spreadsheet out 
and you're going to review it and you're going to sort the data and try and identify common problems. So for example, you might sort the data and review by reason, reason for the discrepancy, which by the way, you're going to enter onto the spreadsheet afterwards when the item is resolved. So a little extra work maybe in keeping the spreadsheet up, maybe then you'll discover that one of your processes in AP has an inordinate amount of the problems. Or perhaps you're having poor purchase orders come out of a particular unit in purchasing, whatever. You're going to review this data. Now, before we get to how you can use this data, if you like this episode, please give us a thumbs up. And if you loved it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Your thumbs up and comments really help us as YouTube takes that as a signal to distribute this content to more viewers. Because if you're happy, they think maybe somebody else will be happy of it. Okay, so now you've identified the problem and you need to take action. Now, I would strongly suggest that you start with any problems that may be in AP so that when people start pointing fingers and saying, well, did you look in your own house? You have some data to back it up and say, yes, we did. And we fixed our problems. So if the problem is in accounts payable, is it with one person, one group? You want to talk to that person, maybe even if it's just like one particular processor and maybe their manager and see what's the problem. Do we need more training? Maybe that person was new and didn't get adequate training. Maybe you had an automation solution and the training that you was given was, you know, good for six of the people on your staff, but this one person didn't understand something. Or maybe they're sloppy and they just need to take more care. But be very careful about assuming, you know, that somebody is sloppy. Maybe getting two screens for your processes. Maybe that would help. I was on a call this morning where I heard people are talking about getting three screens and a few people even getting four screens. So you can see where we're going with that. Okay. So that's, you know, once you've narrowed down your AP issue. Now, let's say the problem was inaccurate accurate purchase orders. Let's say that's what you discovered was the problem. Maybe in this place, the supplier is notifying purchasing of pricing errors. And rather than issuing a corrected purchase order, the purchasing person figures, eh, accounts payable will catch it. Well, that's not acceptable. That creates more work for AP. And it also increases the chances that maybe something will slip through and you'll pay more than you should. So maybe there's one area in purchasing. Maybe one location is making all the mistake. And in that case, maybe there was more training that's needed. So there are many different reasons. Once you identify the reason, then you can talk very tactfully, I might add, to the group involved and try and get that fixed so that the errors related to that particular cause are, I want to say eliminated, but you know, from my lips to God's ears. If the problem is with the invoices, you need to tread very carefully because you don't want to offend the supplier, especially if it's a large supplier. And this might be something that you might have to work with purchasing and maybe approach them together. And it could be, honestly, that you'll talk to them and nothing changes. And, you know, you can't make them do something. I mean, maybe you cannot do business with them, but I doubt that the organization is going to decide not to do business with them because accounts payable isn't happy with the invoices that they send. Just a sad fact of life. So keep in mind that even after you talk to them, you may not be able to fix the problem. And if you can't, okay, this doesn't mean, you know, just give up. Just make a note of who that vendor is, you won't have a lot of them. There'll only be a few that will fall into this category. And then once you know who they are, you always double and triple check their invoices. Yes, it's extra work, but you don't want to pay them twice. Clearly, that's an unacceptable outcome. You've probably heard the saying, a good invoice gets a good payment. Well, how can you tell if you have a good invoice? The answer to that is simple. Complete the three-way match. This very basic accounts payable invoice verification routine can save your organization tons of money. How? By ensuring you pay what you have agreed to pay for the goods both ordered and received at the right time, not too early, not too late. What's not to like about that? We're going to review some of the true power of the three-way match here. The problems and expenses the three-way match helps you avoid. And there are more than you might imagine. The three-way match helps organizations and companies, one, identify fraudulent invoices so they can make sure they are never paid. No one likes to be tricked into paying for something they didn't order. The beauty of the three-way match is it helps quickly identify those scammy invoices that are attempting to steal from your company. Way number two. 
It helps you identify and weed out duplicate invoices, assuming the duplicate invoice number checking routine didn't work, which it often doesn't. As those who work in accounts payable are painfully aware, duplicate invoices has become a huge problem for virtually every company in an organization. My informal polling at a number of events leads me to believe that the number of duplicate invoices is somewhere between 20 and 25 percent of all invoices sent. And, as you are probably aware, most duplicate payments, like 99 percent of them, are not returned. A credit memo may be issued, but the emphasis is on the word may, and it may or may not make its way to the customer. I'm going to stop ranting and raving about this now, but suffice it to say that duplicate invoices are real and a costly issue. Way number three, avoid paying the wrong price, which is almost always higher than you agreed to. The purchase order, if filled out correctly and completely, should provide the clarity around this issue to help the staff doing the three-way match know what price was expected. This is just one reason so many pe folks like the three-way match. Way number four, avoid paying for an entire order when only a partial order it was received. This is why it is so important that the receiving staff actually check that what was delivered matches what is on the packing slip that was in the order, also known as the receiving documents. For if they just mark the documents received without checking, the organization will have no way of knowing if the company or, org or organization was shortchanged. This is one reason some organizations are adamant about not taking partial shipments. It makes the accounting and payment function difficult and can lead to errors, costly errors. Better to issue two separate purchase orders. Way number five, avoid paying extra fees that are supposed to be paid for by the seller. This can include shipping or freight, special customization fees. Again, the purchase order will provide you some clarity on this issue. Way number six, know when early payment discounts are available and adjust processing and payment timing to take advantage of these very lucrative discounts. The purchase order should indicate if an early payment discount is available. If the purchase order doesn't, then the company is relying on the seller to make a note of that on the invoice. And that may or may not happen. If it's not on the purchase order and the seller neglects to include it on the invoice, there's a good chance the discount will be lost forever. Unless you have a really alert accounts payable person who, when processing the invoice, remembers that the seller involved offers early payment discounts. But really, it's not fair to expect the accounts payable person to remember when the purchasing staff neglected to include this very basic but important piece of information on the purchase order. Way number seven that the three-way match helps. Take advantage of special deals, especially when special payment terms were ar arranged pay at the right time, for if special payment terms were arranged, as they often are at year-end, as long as they are reflected on the purchase order, you will be able to avoid paying earlier than was arranged. Think this isn't a real problem? Listen to this very short clip from a longer tip we did on special deals that are frequently well, I, lost. And my real-life proof, if you will. One large, well-respected pharmaceutical company stumbled across this issue. When they went back and researched their activity, they discovered they had lost 100% of these special deals that had been negotiated with a number of different suppliers. It's important that you understand this wasn't only a one supplier issue, it was across the industry. They went back and they looked for several years and they discovered each December they took advantage of a number of different special payment terms offered by different suppliers. And none had been reflected on their purchase order and consequently none were on the invoice. They end up paying for all this extra inventory using their standard payment terms, losing all those special deals negotiated by their purchasing staff.
Understanding the three-way match is a really good first step in implementing a best practice accounts payable or procure to pay function. Understanding the entire invoicing processing function and nuances is equally important. That's why we recently put together a talk that takes a deep dive into the intricacies of this important function. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description.